In this video, I'm going to give you a free checklist you can use to plan an awesome online course that will help grow your influence and income. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Greatness Everyday YouTube channel. Today we are talking about something that I have a lot of experience in and I really enjoy talking about and that is online courses and online programs and how you can use them as a tool to grow your influence and grow your income as well. Depending on what your goals are, I'm going to link what I'm going over here and that is a free checklist that I've created for you to use to go ahead and plan your own online courses, your own online programs. Um, and there's six main features I'm going to go over. So if you want to get your hands on this, remember it's free. It's a checklist. It's things that I have done myself over three courses with over 900 students in them I have used and I've really said, hey, these are the things that I need to do, the fundamentals that I need to do to make sure my online programs that I'm putting out there are really solid and consistent and deliver quality value to the people that are signing up for them. Whether they are free, whether they are paid courses, I know these steps are going to do well what it takes. So if you want to get your hands on this checklist, go click it, uh, the link in the video description down below and check that out. If you want to find out when new videos come out here on my channel that challenge you to upgrade your mindset, your money and more as well, please go down and click the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified when that happens. So today we are talking about online courses and online programs. And these are an incredible tool that I believe people should be considering at least should be considering if they're looking to grow their influence, grow their YouTube community, their Instagram community, take the learning and the community that happens there and elevate that regardless of what your topic or what your mission or what your purpose is in life. An online uh, course or program can help you do exactly that. Or if you're looking to grow your income as well, online courses are only going to double and increase more. And I think Forbes says doubling by the time it hits 2025 in terms of the revenue they do um, every single year. So what I am going to say is please watch this video if you enjoy it, hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. But online courses are something that I have a lot of experience in myself. I've created three uh, online courses right now with the purpose of this video. I am creating a new online course, which is showing people how to create their own online course. I am a teacher by day. I teach high school science. I do a lot of other things that involve teaching as well, as well as for the past few years, I've been growing my uh, greatness everyday community here on YouTube, as well as Instagram and a few other places. But I've also helped um, facilitate some huge sessions with some mentors of mine um, that have had people from all over the world going through these sessions, going through these courses. Um, so I know what I'm talking about, uh, whether it's what I do professionally or what I do on the side. Um, I really believe online courses are something that individuals or organizations or businesses could be considering and should be considering at least um, as a good way to grow their influence and income. So that's what we're here talking about today. We are going to look specifically at this. It's an online course checklist that I have created this online course course about how to make online courses that I'm preparing right now um, is my focus this month. Um, I am going ahead and preparing that course right now. I've got about 18 or 19 video lessons. And, and with that course, um, it's going to be everything from the planning stage, you can see here, to the recording stage, to the editing stage, the uploading stage, the publishing stage. And now that you actually have an online course out there and you're ready to get it to your audience, going ahead and promoting it as well. So these are the six kind of areas that I've really identified we need to get serious about, right? Planning, obviously, you need to think about uh, the forethought that you're going to have going into your online course. The recording stage, how do you actually go ahead and record it so that it looks and it sounds good, uh, etc. The editing, um, do we need to have all these fancy kind of smoke and mirrors and fireworks in the background with sound effects? Or should you just be focusing on the simple things? Well, I'm going to talk about some of those things. When you go ahead and upload it, how do you make sure that you get um, really good, clear, crisp, quality videos or lessons as you're going ahead and uploading and creating those lessons. Um, what platform should you use, et cetera? Those are some things to consider. Um, how to publish it, really where's the best place to publish it and what does a professional publishing job look like um, rather than just kind of some random person's website that doesn't really know what they're doing. We want to make sure that it is quality work because that's going to bring people uh, back to you and then promoting it. Promoting your online course, you've got to get super serious about how to actually 
get eyes and people in to your online courses because I've seen a lot of people out there who've created really good online courses and they're just not having students enroll into it. So again, those are the six uh, pieces and the six sections that I focus my online course called Online Courseology um, about. Like I said, you can um, check out this link down below, but we're gonna go through this one by one right now and I am going to give you a little bit more detail for each bullet point and looking at what each section involves. So uh, let's start out by looking at section one. With section one, we're talking about the planning stage. Okay, so you have gone ahead and say, hey, I want to create an online course, or maybe you're somebody who has a following and there's been a lot of people reaching out and asking you, hey, what do you have for me? How can you help? Whatever, right? And then you decide that you want to go ahead and make an online course, make an online program. So um, one of the things that I think the very first thing you should do is you should be going ahead and you should be picking a specific topic. If you're gonna go ahead and focus just on one general topic, well, it's gonna be much, much harder. And if you don't have a lot of experience doing online programs, it's gonna be way harder than you realize to use a general topic um, to really get people into that course right away, unless you have millions of followers or something like that. So with online courses, I would say when you're starting out, you should go ahead and get really specific on the topic that you're talking about. Um, I look at my very first online course, I actually taught um, high school teachers and elementary, secondary, middle school teachers all around the world um, how to use a specific app in their classroom. And I had no experience using this app other than uh, a year before I started using it for some videos on YouTube. Um, from there, I saw that it, it was a very powerful app for teachers to use, and I started using it in my own classroom. Then I realized that there were other teachers that wanted to use it, and it solved the problem because the app was really hard to use in their class. So my online course basically taught teachers how to use that specific app. It was called the Explain Everything app um, in their classrooms. And within two weeks of me publishing it, uh, the company found it somehow and uh, their CEO reached out to me from Poland and he said, hey, we really love your course. You've done a really good job simplifying how to use our app in a teaching classroom. Um, and we appreciate it, we really like it. So that was really cool for, for me to see because I was super specific about how to use this one app. Their company found it a few weeks after I pub published it um, and they really enjoyed it and they really liked it. And that was cool for me to see and get that feedback from them. So step one, pick a specific topic. Step two, go ahead and create a course outline. So you need to go ahead and get serious about what your course is going to involve. And if you look at me right now, I'll just tell you, these stages are the different sections in my online courseology course that I am preparing right now. So you're gonna see planning, recording, editing, etc. Right, so I have this uh, outline that I've gone ahead, I've created. Sometimes it can be really be uh, brief by going ahead and writing your bullet points out there, or maybe you wanna go ahead and write a paragraph or plan out each individual lecture and lesson. Um, that's something that as you, you do more online courses, you will get uh, a general flow. I have done online courses where I have just bullet pointed things out. I've done online courses where I've prepared uh, slideshows for each lesson and I've done it that way. And I've also done online courses where I have scripted everything out. So I spent like a month writing an online course. I scripted it all out and then I use that for the filming stage, etc. But you need to have some sort of an idea what your course is going to involve and some sort of outline there as well. And then like I said in this third stage, you could script your lesson. You could go ahead and create um, a PowerPoint, which you, you'd be f very familiar with your lessons as you go through there, but that's something that you might want to consider and is totally optional for sure. In the next section, we are looking at the recording section here. So with recording, I want to make sure that you've gone ahead and you've practiced and you have tested out your lessons. You really want to make sure that you know your stuff so that when it comes to recording day, uh, you can bang them out and you can do and deliver great quality lessons. And I look at when I have done these before, the very first online course I did, it took me so long to get this stuff done uh, because I didn't practice it. Um, I was fam familiar with the app, but I didn't know what I wanted to do in each individual lesson, um, at least in the detail that I should have. So 
I messed up and I did retakes and I did so many different things that really could have been much more efficient if I had practiced my lessons beforehand. And for me, if I look at the last two online courses that I've created, um, one of them I scripted and I rented out an Airbnb and I filmed it there. So I really had to make sure that the one day I had to film and record everything, um, I didn't mess up and I wasn't making any mistakes. Or if I did have a few little mishaps here and there um, that I could get all my filming done before I left that Airbnb. And then if I look at the last one that I created, um, I mean, it was so easy. I know this stuff in and out. I created the PowerPoints before. So within one day, I filmed my entire course um, and over delivered on value on that, I'm sure. So those are a few things to go ahead and consider when you look at the recording stage. Next, you wanna make sure that your recording uh, location, you know how you're going to set it up. So for me, I record the majority of my videos here in my living room. Um, I've got my lights. I have um, a backlight as well. I've got my desk with my iPad, with my recording software, with my camera, my tripod here, etc. I know the distance that my mic has to be from me, as well as the camera, as well as the angle the lights are showing up, whether there's background noise, whether there isn't, what heat there is uh, in my room. If it's too hot where I am in the winter time right now filming this video, um, I can only record at certain times of day if I've got a lot of heavy vehicles driving by, etc. So you really need to make sure that that your recording location is set up, that it is good, and that it's not gonna really compromise the value of um, the, the, the product that you're creating. So that's something that I really think you should consider. Um, and in this online course, I'm gonna really go deep with this lesson of your recording location. Uh, it's really, really important. And then obviously you wanna make sure that you record your lessons. So making sure that you can go ahead and record your lessons in a good environment that really allows the, the, the um, student or the person partaking in your online course to make sure that there aren't any distractions out there and they can focus on learning and applying more importantly the content, right? So that is very important. So that is the second section. Then if we look at our next section talking about editing, with editing, the very first thing that I need to make sure is once you've recorded your, your lessons, you need to go, uh, go make sure that you have saved your files please, that you've saved your files, that you've backed them up somewhere. Um, because I could not think of anything worse than going through an entire online program and not saving your work, not backing up your work and losing it all. That would be horrific. I, I don't even want to think about that. So that's the very first thing you got to do. Then I'd also really encourage you to make sure that your branding and editing is consistent throughout. So if you have five video lessons, cool, that works. Keep it consistent. If you have 30 video lessons, cool, keep it consistent because when I'm jumping into an online program, I wanna make sure that the branding is, is simple yet consistent and it shows up time and time again so I know what to expect right? Um, sometimes less is more when it comes to branding, in my opinion, as well. And then obviously, when you export your files, you want to make sure that they are in the highest uh, quality possible. HD quality videos is like a must now. Your audio has got to be sounding nice and crisp. Um, and those are some things to think about editing. And in my online course, I will show you how to really um, do all of those things, make your videos look professional and really high quality while going ahead and um, doing it in a way that doesn't consume your whole life, doesn't take a year to edit, doesn't take a year to produce, etc. Um, so I think I have some tips and tricks that you can use to make sure that that happens. Um, let's look at our next piece here. The next piece, we're going to go in and look at hosting um, the platform. If you have going ahead and um, chosen what platform you want to host on, great, that's awesome. You know you might want to host on Teachable like I do. Um, you might want to host on Udemy, which I've done before. Uh, maybe use Thinkific, maybe use ClickFunnels, maybe you, you use a different platform. The very first step here would be to make sure that you've chosen a hosting platform. And this could be something that you um, use as a free source for that, or it might be something that you might have to pay. And sometimes paying for those platforms is better. So um, there's some pros and cons to each. Um, me personally, I have used Udemy, which um, they will market your course, but they'll also take a cut of your course and they can bring your price. If you set it at $100, uh, they might sell it for $9.99, right? Um, so there's kind of some pros and cons with that. Or what I've done now is I control because I have traffic sources like my YouTube channel, Instagram page, email list, etc. 
I control um, my online program. So I have my own online program, uh, financialfreedomsystem.com. If you go to that website, you're going to see all of the courses that I have up there. Um, and that's something much more powerful to me where I am currently than it would be me just um, putting it up on a free website and not getting 100% of the costs that are associated with that. So that's uh, step one of the uploading stage. Next, we look at making sure that your lessons are uploaded. There is a way to do this um, so that it happens very nice and easily. You can use bulk uploaders. You can upload each individual lesson um, one at a time. Um, there's a good system and a good process for that. And there are also bad systems and bad processes for that. So I can help you learn how to do exactly those. And then obviously when it is uploaded, I always, always, if not more than once or have other people do this, I have them go through a complete run through of the course to make sure that they can download the guidebooks to make sure that they can download the videos that they need to watch. Maybe they want to use it in an app compared to um, the desktop software and using it in an app, the formatting is different. So you need to make sure that your um, banner headlines and you need to make sure that your photos and your images, et cetera, uh, can be accessed properly through your phone and the app that's out there as well. So those are some things that you might kind of work through. Or I've also had issues with my sign up. Uh, process before where I've had a friend go ahead and promote the videos, um, uh, sorry, promote the course that I've been putting out there. Um, and as a result, the first few people that signed up um, didn't get into it because, or they're trying to sign up, they didn't get into it because I had issues with the sign up process, even though I thought I'd fixed them. Um, obviously I didn't. So doing a complete run through of your course can help avoid some of these um, situations. And, and really, unfortunately, I lost out on money in that situation. And so did my friend because he was uh, paired up with me as an affiliate. So that's something to consider as well. When we look at publishing, okay, the next stage, stage five is publishing. Um, I really make sure, like I just kind of went over, I tested the sign up process, making sure that they could sign up smoothly, quickly, easily. There weren't any problems with the payment system, etc. Um, and I made sure that that can run from start to finish all the way through exactly without any hiccups. Um, next, I like to, during this time, go ahead and announce a giveaway, um, some sort of way that I can get some attention to my course. So in, in a way, um, this is something that I'm gonna give a course away for free, access to that course, but I'm also gonna figure out who is interested in that course. I could then go ahead and give them a coupon when they um, go ahead and, and I actually reveal that course, uh, release that course. I could also build up my email list with that. Um, I could get more followers on my Instagram page or my YouTube channel because of it as well. Um, so a giveaway, even though it's one access for one person to your course, uh, I think it can be really powerful into generating more sales and just more brand awareness as time goes on. And then decide when you are going to release it. Decide I'm gonna release it on January 1st. I'm gonna release it on May 1st, right? May 30th. It doesn't matter what the date is. Um, if you can go ahead and schedule this release date with um, like a reason, a, a purpose to it, um, if we're talking about financial freedom, which I have a few courses on myself, right? Well, maybe a good time to release that would be uh, the start of a new year where a lot of people are looking for ways to be better with their money. Or maybe you have a course that is related to fitness, right? So many people are setting New Year's resolutions at this time of the year that that might be a great time um, to go ahead and set at that release date, right? So there's so many different reasons why you might want to release a course at a specific time, but these are some of the things that I would consider that you think about at least when it goes through. Uh, if we look at promoting your course, which is the last stage here, you want to make sure that you promote your course um, a couple different ways. So the very first thing that I've said here is you've made sure that you've created what I'm calling a course sales funnel. And what a sales funnel is, it takes your general audience, it takes people who are watching your YouTube videos or listening to your podcast or following you on Instagram, somewhere else, you have an email list, and they're just kind of like free, um, free traffic, we would say. So these are people who are watching your stuff for free. What your goal is trying to do is eventually get those free viewers, that free audience you have, get them to enroll in your course so that they're going to pay and they're gonna see the results of what they are paying for. So sales funnels can be really practical. 
whether it's a sales funnel for um, a free giveaway, even like something I'm doing here with this checklist, right? I'm giving you a checklist that you can use to um, plan your own online course. Boom, you've got everything you need. Once you go down, click that link below and then you get that checklist in your hands. You've got literally everything you need to plan your online course. And I know if you do these things, you're gonna create a really good one. Um, so there, I'm giving you that. But in exchange, what I want is I want your email email address so that when I release this online program that's coming out soon, uh, I already have an audience that I can say, hey, my online course called Online Courseology, which teaches you how to make online courses is now out. Go check it out. Um, and the point of it, growing an email list or a sales funnel isn't to spam people. Um, I send like one email out and that's it. Um, but with that, you really want to make sure that you have some plan on how you're actually going to get students into your course, whether it's free or paid. That's a big thing. Um, then you want to release it to your audience, right? There's, there's no point in building up a great online course and online program if you're not going to have anybody actually get into that. So um, you've got to go ahead and release that to your audience. And I would say release it to your existing audience. That does a few things that already gives you like a head start when you are looking to um, get people into your program. But at the same time, it might also attract people into subscribing to your YouTube channel or following you on Instagram because they know that they're going to get first access to your course and your programs and any other information that you have going through uh, going forward if they are following you. So you kind of have a win-win when it comes to that scenario. And then everybody talks about marketing. They, they throw that term out there, but what does it look like? And what does it look like to do this really easily when it comes to online courses? Some of the best ways that I've used is obviously, like I said before, going ahead and releasing it to your existing audience. There's nothing better than that. Um, you know these people, hopefully they know you, they like you, they think what you talk about is good, they think what you talk about has value for them in your life or in their life. Um, so they're more likely to go ahead and sign up for something with you, whether it's free or not. They, they, they have that relationship existing with you already. So you're not what we're, we're going through and talking about cold traffic, right? You're kind of like warm, you know each other. Cold traffic, on the other hand, is when you're using something like Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, where you're writing an article and publishing it somewhere. You do not know these people. There's no existing relationship with you. And that's a little bit harder to convert those people. It takes anywhere from seven to 11 contacts with somebody to actually go ahead and make a purchase or sign up for a course or a program that you offer. Um, so that takes a lot of time. So there's a few different marketing methods um, that I'm gonna cover in my course that will really help you understand what it takes to get people and students into your program. There is a free checklist that I've created just for you to help you create awesome online courses that will help grow your income and your influence. If you wanna find out more about that checklist, go to the video description below, click that link and you can get that. Like I said, it is free. Um, I am also working on my online courseology course, which is gonna be coming out in this month, later this month uh, specifically. And I'm really excited about that because I know that it can deliver, it can provide you tons of value if you're looking at growing an online course, an online program, maybe even a master mind. Um, there's incredible amounts of potential out there for people. So definitely go check that out when it's available. I'll link that down below as well. So if this video helped you, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions at all about this course, about how to build your own online course, about the course that I am releasing later this month, go ahead and let me know in the comments and make sure that if you want to find out when new videos related to mindset, money, and more come out here on the Greatness Everyday YouTube channel, that you click the subscribe button and you tap the bell to get those notifications when they come out. Thanks for watching. Remember, choose greatness every day and I'll see you next time.